Ruminations on the U.S. Cold Civil War. 2017 going into 2018. And the departure of Keith Olbermann. Y2K 17.11.30. And the quotes. All living things are connected, and those connections that make us strong can also make us vulnerable. And that comes from the movie, classic, work of art, Threads, and it's a paraphrase. There is no doubt in Keith Olbermann's mind that the nightmare called Trump is on its way out. It is only a matter of time and inevitable as tax paying and dying. Oberman is so confident of his opinion that he made his last The Resistance broadcast for GQ on YouTube, which he entitled The End. Simply The End. I would love to be as optimistic as Oberman is and have no plans right now to bring do-rag wisdom to a close. There is still a major fight ahead and a cold civil war raging every day since Creepin' and Trump was flushed into our lives. Yes, we must believe, as Dan Rather writes, that we are better than this. That there is a core of goodness at the heart of American values. That despite the evil some Americans are capable of, most of us stand for what is right and will run this piece of crap, this traitor creep Trump out on rails. In the meantime, he is still occupying our highest office and is being enabled by GOP extremist traitors. Personally, Oberman should have kept going because the cold civil war is far 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 from over you know they're about to start passing their tax bill they're about to privatize the internet more of that later trump is inflicting devastating harm on our country and he is not afraid to do so because he is staunchly president of only one third of our country who support him. Even if he is pissed down their throats, he would still get their support. So please, we have to keep this in mind as we fight our way out of this nightmare. Apparently, Oberman hasn't. He's very confident. He's very optimistic. I am not. The GOP now controls all three branches of our federal government. It seems like a miracle that they still have not succeeded in passing any major legislation except stealing a Supreme Court seat that will negatively affect future generations for 40 years or more. But this does not mean that they are not working hard every second of every single day to screw us all up. This party is adept in the use of Orwellian techniques. They have absolutely no respect for the intelligence of the voters. They lie through their teeth as simply as breathing. Their only priority is to help their rich benefactors to the detriment of a of us all. And then think of the return of the Gilded Age to the power of ten. Again, there is still that one-third of our country that will support Trump and his agenda no matter what. These are those whose mentality brings a Hitler into power. This group will stubbornly hold on to what it thinks are values, but at their hearts they have none. None. Trump and his GOP rely on the third fear 
That's the third of the country that supports him. Uh, he relies on their fear, their ignorance, their greed and hatred. They will vote in blocks to keep the chaos and tyranny going. They love The Apprentice, so now they revel in their personal 24-hour-a-day reality show. And Trump plays them like a broken piano. Yes, as Oberman, Keith Oberman predicts, Trump is on his way out. I believe that. I do. But until he and his GOP scum are totally voted out in front of these eyes, or excuse me, in front of this one eye at least, one eye, they still wield the power. So whether Trump is in office for six months or shy of two months before the end of his term, he and his gang have more than enough time to F everything up. But Oberman is going to take time off and will no longer write about politics. Bully for Keith Oberman. But remember, we still can't depend on the Democratic Party taking over as many optimists, including Oberman, may believe. The GOP of Putin wants us to be entertained, distracted, deluded, dumb, and apathetic. If we are not paying attention, they will succeed in re-electing this turd, Trump. I refuse, folks, to delude myself and accept it. I have accepted that we are in a cold civil war. As Carl Bernstein agrees, that the GOP wants to hurt us, that religious extremists are a major threat, and that this creep in the awful office is a crooked, racist, birther, traitor, and he's freaking crazy. Take it from me, I know my own. I will never underestimate the enemy. In fact, as much as I despise the Trump loons, I also fear and respect them because they fanatically support their idol and will get out and vote no matter what. They will attack their foes with brutal insults and even with violence. Our side, folks, must do the same or lose our precious country to Putin forever. But Oberman, bless his heart, needs a permanent vacation from political news now that we need him the most. In the meantime, here are some battlefronts among many and many more to come. One, the creep in his party want to mess up our tax code not reform it. Do not let a creep who never showed his taxes to mess with ours. If we allow Trump to mess with our taxes, that is insane. Two, the GOP creeps do not want us to have federally funded health care. They are trying to repeal the ACA individual mandate in their tax ripoff. If they succeed, this will finally bring the ACA to an end. And if their tax bill ripoff comes to pass, it will also eventually murder Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid too. Three. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is a watchdog agency that protects the consumers from predatory bank and lending practices. It was formed by the Dodd-Frank bill in the wake of the GOP-generated Great Recession. Trump and his GOP want to destroy the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Since the present director, Cordray, has left, 
Trump wants to put his scum, Mike Mulvaney, in as temporary permanent head of this important agency. And at this broadcast, a Trump appointed judge has ruled in favor of letting his creep, Mulvaney, run down the CFPB. Mulvaney has always said that he despised the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and always felt it should be killed. Trump, in attempting to place this creep in charge of a consumer watchdog agency, is proverbially putting the fox in charge of the hen house. All of this is part of his plan to undermine every agency in our federal government. His cabinet is made up of bloodthirsty buccaneers who are dedicating to decimating every department that they are supposed to care for. As you all know, the GOP and Trump want to privatize everything. Because after all, all unrestrained and unregulated capitalism is a holy ideal. They're working right now to privatize the internet through eliminating net neutrality. If they accomplish this, massive corporate media conglomerates will be able to decide what we see and what we can say on the net. Remember, Trump and his GOP with Putin want to turn our free country into a totalitarian superstate. We cannot allow that to happen. If only we had Olbermann's professional voice to carry on this fight, but he did his tour and now is to the time for golf. Trump and his GOP are being backed up against the wall. And they know it. They hope that their base will stay strong and fanatic and that the rest of us will stay home and not vote. As any animal that is backed up against the wall, it will fight to the death. Trump and his GOP will wage bloody battle to make sure that their agenda is shoved down our throats no matter what. They have the backing and they have the plan. They also have uncompromisingly monomaniacal resolve. If it wasn't for the fact that many lower court judges were picked by Obama, we would now have a travel ban in place, sanctuary cities would be open and under attack, Trump is trying to nominate his own judges, he is trying to mold the Justice Department in his own image by personally interviewing prospective candidates for district attorney. No president has ever done this before because Trump would rather be king than president. Their backs against the wall, Trump and his GOP will unleash a fury on us that we must be prepared to answer. As insignificant as I believe my broadcast is, sincerely, I must stay on the air. I thank Oberman and his resistance commentaries and am saddened that he will no longer do any political work. His last broadcast made me more optimistic, but it also strengthened my resolve to keep do-rag wisdom going. Because this cold civil war won't be over until we live to see the end of the Trump nightmare and its GOP hypocrisy. Oberman should have stuck around for the final battle because it hasn't come yet. He mentioned that he wasn't paid for the resistance commentaries that he made for GQ, but at least he got a book deal out of it. Full disclosure, I purchased his book. <laughs>